welcome to today's video. We are going to be doing something a little bit different. You guys have seen that I am in a new house and I am doing a little bit of woodwork. So today we are actually building something from scratch and we are building a custom frame. So I picked up a print from Ikea and you can buy them with frames already made to fit them. However, they only come in black and silver, maybe white too, but it's just a really thin frame and I didn't really love how it looked and I really wanted a wood frame to match the rest of my house. So I've had this print for a long time but I've never had a frame for it and I didn't want to just put the canvas up on the wall. So today we are going to be making a custom frame. This is really, really great for any type of picture that you don't have a frame. That's, maybe it's a unique size or you've cut it down or you just want a certain size image that you can't find a frame you like. This is a great way to do it. So if you're interested in learning how to make your own frame, then keep on watching. So I got some of these. Um, they are two and a half inches thick and they're eight feet long, which is way too much, but we needed extra wood and we wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna be too short. Now something to take into consideration when you are making your own frame is you're gonna need to cut 45 degree angles, which they do not do for you at Home Depot. So. You have to be kind of cautious of that, so you don't want to get wood that's super, super thick, and we are going to get started. First things first, you want to lay your wood out, how it's going to sit, and roll your print out. You can measure, but I'm a visual person, and I think it's easier just to see everything laid out in front of me. So to get a 45 degree angle, we need two sides to be the same length. So you measure one side, I got two inches, and then I took the same measurement on the long side. So it's gonna be two inches on both sides. And then I'm gonna connect the corner to that little dash that I made. And I'm just gonna draw a line and that's how I'm gonna know where to cut. This is very important that you try to get it exact as possible. Then you take your saw. If you have a circular saw, it's much easier, but they're a little bit more expensive. If you're doing this for on a budget, then this hand saw is the way to go. As long as you have a boyfriend or just some jacked arms to do it yourself. I didn't end up doing it all and Matt helped me out. Thankfully, I have a great boyfriend to help me with my crazy ideas. But basically, you're just gonna sit there and saw going slowly to make sure you stay on that line and just continuously checking to make sure you're good. Then you want to take that triangle and go on the other side where it's measured and draw it the same way to create the exact same angle. You could measure again but I just think it's easier and then you're just going to keep making cuts. Also, don't forget that when you are measuring to leave a little bit of an overlap so that the wood is on top of the picture so you have somewhere to stick it to later on. I started by making two cuts on the same piece of wood and then going to the parallel side and drawing the same one. I try to put it as close to the corner as possible to maximize my wood and I'm just drawing the exact same lines. This is very important that you take the time to make straight lines that are correct because otherwise it won't match up. So you're basically you're just making two of the exact same pieces. Then you're just going to saw those and hopefully they match up. Assuming your first cut is correct, then you can just use that same piece of wood and draw the same angles on the, your other pieces of wood. If it's a 45 degree angle, then they will all match up perfectly at the end of it. Once the first piece is done and Matt's working on the second piece, I'm doing the job of sanding it down just to make sure it's nice and even and there's nothing sticking up. Now there was some that the wood was a little bit off because we used a hand saw and for those we used our electric sander, but if you're using a circular saw or you just cut really straight, then just a little piece of sandpaper will do the trick. Basically, it should look like this, nice and flat and smooth. Once all eight cuts are made, then I like to lay it out just to make sure that everything's looking good and lining up correctly and just to see that visual of what the end result's gonna look like. Now we're on to staining and this is wood. You don't have to stain it, you could leave it as is. The one we bought actually had a white finish on it. So one side was finished, one side was raw and I liked the look of the raw side better. So the stain didn't absorb super, super well, but enough 
to make it look nice. So basically, I'm just going over each one twice because of that finish, I ended up doing two coats and making sure that every little bit of the front, top, and sides are all covered. Then I'm gonna flip them all over once they're dry and my neighbor lent me this little like perfect right angle thing. So I just did that to make sure that I was screwing them in the right direction because if they're crooked, it really messes everything up. Then I got these little brackets from Home Depot. They were super inexpensive and I basically just took four screws and screwed them in to each piece. Let me just warn you, this is not the sturdiest frame, especially when it is this size. If you wanted it a little sturdier, you could put a piece of wood on the back as well to give it more support, but we just left it like this because once it's on the wall, we won't be doing too much to it. Then you're going to want to take your print and roll it out. If it's smaller, then obviously you just put it over top of the frame and you want to make sure that it is as straight and pull tight as possible. It's really a two-person job. It's super hard to do it by yourself if it's something of this size. And you want to make sure that it lines up straight with the frame. Otherwise, once it's pulled tight, it will go at an angle and it will leave gaps. Make sure it's parallel with the frame and even on all sides before you start taping. Basically, all I did was take some masking, packing tape, and went around every single edge taping the print to the frame. As I mentioned earlier, when you're constructing the frame, you want to measure it a little bit smaller so that the opening is smaller than the actual picture so that there's some layover between the print and the frame so you have room to put your tape and pull it tight. Otherwise, there will be gaps and holes and that's not cute. Then we chose to use these hooks. I don't know the name for them, but they just came in a pack of a whole bunch of nails and like wall hangings. And basically we just grabbed two of those and we nailed them to the frame. Basically we just took two teeny nails and nailed them in. Be aware of where they're spaced on the frame so you know where to put the nails on your wall. This is how it should look. Make sure that they're nice and straight so that your picture hangs straight. And that's how it's gonna be sitting on the nail. So we have two of them and we didn't actually measure them beforehand. So we needed to measure the space in between the two brackets so we knew how far apart to put the nails. Also, we needed to make sure that they were centered and the same height on the actual wood so that again, our nails were level when hanging it. If for some odd reason you've never hung a painting or a picture before, then this is how you do it. Basically, you wanna first have someone hold it on the wall and step back so you can see if you like it, make sure it's even, make sure that it's centered on the wall, as well as above your bed if it's going above your bed. Then you're gonna get up there and throw the level on top, make sure it's level and looking straight, especially when there's two nails going in. Once you know it's level, then you're gonna mark where the two holes should go according to where the brackets are. Then you move the painting away and you put the nails in the wall. Once the nails are nice and secure, then you throw that puppy back up there. Then you step back to admire your creation. Alright guys, so that is how the frame turned out. As you can see, it's hanging above me, behind me, and I am so happy with it. Let me just talk to you a little bit about the process now that it's done. It's not that easy, especially when you're using a handsaw. It's very hard to get the 45 degree angle without a protractor. And the method that I used and showed you guys in this video does make a 45 degree angle. But in order for this to work and all of the corners to match up perfectly, you have to go exactly on that line with your handsaw. And if you like sway at all while going through, it causes it to not fit perfectly. So ours came out pretty good. I'd say it's probably like 85%, 90% there. There are a little bit of gaps in some of the corners, but you know what? It's such a big frame and from far away, you really don't notice. And most people are not going to come and inspect your frame. So don't be too hard on yourself. I got very frustrated 
while I'm making this because I'm a perfectionist and I wanted them all to be perfect. But if you have a circular saw, then this project is super, super simple. But no matter what, I think this big frame cost us maybe $10 because each piece of wood was only like two bucks. So it's really, really inexpensive for a very big frame. I love the wood. It matches the rest of the wood furniture in my room. And I love how it turned out overall. I would say sandpaper and an electric sander really help here because if you make any mistakes, then you're able to just sand them to make the wood nice and flat because any bulges or bumps in the wood are gonna cause issues with them lining up as well. So I would recommend having sandpaper when you do this and Overall, I think that it was pretty simple and straightforward. It was just the angles that <laughs> killed us. If you guys don't have a saw and don't want to do that, you, you could just make a rectangular frame and instead of having the angles, basically just have two pieces longer and two pieces shorter and line them up that way and use the same brackets that we used. So that's an easier way to get it more exact and perfect and you can also have the Home Depot workers cut your wood there at Home Depot for you if you don't want to do it yourself. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you learned how to make a frame at home. I hope this can help you elevate your home and your pictures and take them to a new level. And yeah, I, if you guys try this, leave in the comments, tag me on Instagram and tell me how it worked for you. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe down below to see more of me. Also, don't forget to turn on that bell icon to get notified every time I post. We have a lot of interior design and decorating and building and flipping coming soon. So stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.